but for spike brothers <laughs> you should have expected this okay so you guys know that vanguard zero is now online so you could download it you could play it and it's a bunch of fun to play but there's some few issues to the game spike brothers are not introduced yet so we have to wait a month or two maybe three until spike come in the english meta but we already know that Spike was an event that already have been played in the Japanese format. Which means that for some people as me, we could still make the deck in real life, test it, play with it, have fun with it, finger zero style ruling. Okay, and also, of course, we have Kyo. Kyo Yahagi making a comeback playing Spike Brothers is also a big thing for me because I've always enjoyed him as being one of my favorite characters of uh, Frankguard, the game, the anime, everything. So I was very devastated when I saw him playing Murakumo in the reboot, but I see now he's playing Spike again because the Finger Zero, of course, uh, played the original game. Alright, so let's jump into this video. What will you see? Well, I will show you all the cards that are known for Spike Brothers that will get also revealed for the English format, which they will keep the same skill. Um, I'm sure of that. So, the great threes, the great twos, and the great ones. And then after that, I will talk about some of the builds that you could make. And I will make a separate video to talk about the combos that you could do with Spike Brothers. Because as you know, Spike Brothers is, of course, a combo heavy deck. And you could make a lot of crazy combos with it. Alright, now, first for the Great Threes, we have General Seafried. General Seafried makes a, a comeback with his original skill. So, when this new drive check reveals a Great Three, call that to an open Ragar Circle. And then, of course, the triggers will go off. They, they will activate. And then, when it's boosted, it gets an extra 3k. Alright, what does this mean? Well, it does mean a lot. <laughs> One thing is Spike Brothers could multi-attack again. Uh, second thing is, if you guys are familiar with the Finger Zero rules, normally when a trigger goes off that is in your drive check, that trigger goes to your drop zone. But now, you could call it to an open regular circle, which means that you already plus from his ability. You're already calling an extra attacker, but you also plus on field. On the other hand, you have to have an open regular circle form to activate, which means less interceptor, so less defense. So you kind of are having more offense and less defense, the way that Spike Brothers always worked. So this is nothing new. This is definitely very interesting because the skill works really good, even in Zero, which is kind of a letdown because Spike Brothers will have almost no front row or will have no grade 2 in the front row. It's still okay because the Spike Brother deck is very aggro and very combo heavy. So with this, you can still have to use that mechanic to keep calling those great threes. Second one we have is of course Juggernaut Maximum. Juggernaut Maximum being also a high rarity card, a triple rare, both of them, is also very interesting because this guy, as you have heard this before, is a trigger. Because all the great threes are trigger and finger zero. If you don't know uh, how finger zero work then this video will be a little bit strange for you so i would have to make another video to explain explain that to you but you could put the comment in the comment section below and i will try to uh, explain that to you as well but pretty much uh, all of the game mechanic is different your grade threes are triggers and they are in your deck or you know in your hand doesn't really matter but when you drive check a grade three uh, and it has the trigger marker on it. So pretty much whenever trigger goes off, it goes to the drop zone, it does not go to your hand, and your dry, your other drive checks go to the bottom of the deck. So it's kind of definitely very different, but it's also a lot of fun to play. And what does mean for this guy? Well, because Juggernaut Maximum has his original ability as well, so when this card attacks, you swap plus one, and he gains an extra 5k, and at the end of the battle, he goes to the bottom of your deck. Normally he goes to the deck and when you shuffle, but now he goes to the bottom of the deck. That's still alright, because this guy is a trigger, whenever he goes to the bottom of the deck, it's very important, because now you have more triggers in your deck to use. So that's why most of the Spike Brothers players are calling this guy our new heal, because he could go back to your deck and you could keep healed, healing with him, but you could also make him a crit or a draw, whatever you want. Please don't make him a stand, 
you could, but please don't. <laughs> so, um, I, I do think that stance could work in this deck, but I don't know. <laughs> Still spikes. And the draws are very important, even in this deck, because you do need the hand and you do need to refill your field. Okay, now we have the Skydiver with his amazing call ability. There is one small thing they change about the Skydiver, which is normally the Skydiver was one of the few cards that his skill goes off whenever he hits, but now he needs to hit a Vanguard, which I think is understandable because otherwise this card would be broken, would be too good because you could just attack into a Vanguard and call something from your hand, but now he has to hit the Vanguard, which means that sometimes you have to swing with your Vanguard on their Vanguard to have him being still able to hit their Vanguard. So yeah, it is definitely interesting the, how, how the game work yeah, and how Spike Brothers work in Zero because the mechanic of Spike Brothers of clearing your front row is kind of stupid to work in Zero because normally you would need to have rare guards in the front row, especially great twos, because those rare guards will help you survive the game. But now you're kind of clearing your front row, so you have almost no defense except you having let's say the perfect guards in hand and maybe one interceptor who they could retire easily so it's kind of strange but it's also very effective because you kind of multi-attack and you could also go to a different uh, strategy you could always call a great two if you want to okay last but not least or actually least normally i would say last but not least but last and least is the united attacker uh, united attacker is a card that i didn't want to see back at all but yeah, again, which other grade 3 they could have introduced? I don't know. <laughs> uh, what this card does is at the beginning of your main phase, pretty much you soul charge 1 and he gets an extra 2k. That's a good thing if he's boosted by the Wonder Boy, you could still make great columns. Problem with this guy is, is he needs soul. You need to soul plus 6 and count plus 4, and then when his attack hits, you may call up to 5 um, rare guards from the top of your deck. That's a very good skill and it's also very devastating because it gives you two new attackers. Problem is, you need Soul Blast 6, which you don't have because a lot of your rare guards cost you to pay Soul. This deck actually abuses Soul like crazy and does not have very good Soul Chargers, which is like the Medical Manager, like the Great One, which I'll show you later we didn't get. So you kind of need the soul, and that's why United Decker right here is a card that you don't really use that much, and that's why also it's just a common, while in the other clans it's a triple air or double air or higher, that the skill like Amaterasu, um, skill that just give you a lot of advantage, but with him it's not that effective because the clan always used soul and he was never a card that we played. Okay, now we get to the great twos. So, the first one we have is High Speed Bracky. Yeah, again, it's really nice to have High Speed Bracky, of course, making a comeback. Uh, this card is really, really strong and it's very good. The uh, thing is with him, is he having the same ability as the Juggernaut Maximum, which means he could get the extra 5k and then go to the bottom of the deck. It's very good because sometimes you need that last attack to hit and he gives you that. So... You don't really have to use him, it's really up to you. If you want to, you could do it. If you don't, then he stays there as a defense, as a great two. So I do like Bracky a lot, always liked him, and now even more. Now we have Devil Summoner. It's another card that I was very happy to see make a comeback because it's very easy, but also does work very good, especially with the call mechanic of Spike Brothers. When this card is placed, you reveal the top card, if it's a great one or a great two, you call it. And pretty much you will be calling a lot of your great twos to get your defense back, but also whenever you plus on the field is always good, and he stays there again as a shield. So in the early game, this card is amazing, especially if you go first, then he does a lot of work, and which is definitely very good. And then we have the Zachary's. Um, I was never a big fan of Zachary's in the old days, and now, again, I'm not. The thing is with Zachary's is he needs to hit, and ever when he hits, you soul blast one and you draw a card and then he goes to the bottom of the deck. There is no reason for you to activate Zachary's skill. There is maybe because you want to have the skill of your Fangard activated, but he needs to hit a Fangard, which means that 
you need to attack Let's say that your opponent has one interceptor, then you could get his skill off. But if your opponent has no interceptor, there's no way that you could get his skill off. And he's just awkward in this game because normally you would like to attack with him and then he hits. Then he goes back to the deck and you draw a card, which means you have more shield in your hand and you have less ragars on the field to retire. But in the Vanguard Zero mechanic, he does not work that way. You kind of actually sacrifice the shield that you have, which is your group too. So, again, it's kind of stupid that this card kept the same skill, but also I I don't really see people using this, um, or I don't expect people to use this. If I'm wrong, tell me in the comment section, because I have tested this deck, but not on the game itself. I tested it in the real life and with friends on area, but with the Vanguard Zero um, rules, let's say. So, again... Let me know in the comment section what you think of Zachary's me. I'm not a fan. I've never been. Then we have a Spike Bouncer in his old art. So again, very nice to see this guy. I never used him in the old days, but now he is good because we don't really want to use Zachary's. And you kind of really have to play at least four grade twos because the last one, of course, is uh, our uh, 10k body, um, which is always good. Panther right here. But uh, the uh, Spike Bouncer has, of course, the ability that whenever one of your units hits, you he gets the extra 3k. His ability is a little bit awkward because sometimes when you call him later on, it's not a continuous ability that he still gets the 3k. He needs to see if something hits. Uh, although I do need to test that uh, in, in the game whenever this clan really comes out to the English format. Uh, the thing is, I think that he is good. He's way better than Zachary's. He still get the extra 3k most of the time because something will hit. Um, and it's that unit hits the Vanguard. So this could be your last attacker. So you could attack like with, as I said, Ragard to Ragard, Vanguard to Ragard. And then this would be the attacking that goes to the Vanguard as well, which is good. But again, it's an 8k body. Some of their great ones could take him out easy. Uh, you would rather play the 10k or the 9k. Uh, still... The Devil Summoner is a 7k, but he's still very good because he gives you that free stuff. And uh, we in Spike Brothers love pluses. Always love pluses. Then we get to the Great One. Of course, we have the 8k Vanilla and we have the Perfect Guard. So I don't need to explain those. You get those in every clan. And then we have uh, the Assault Squad right here. Uh, it's really nice to see those goblins make a comeback. Um, they have the ability which is better than the one from the old days. It's whenever they attack, hits its three stats. Then people would say, hey, D-Boy, it's the same skill. Well, yeah, but he's a 6k and he was a 4k, if I'm not mistaken. So with the... Oh, yeah, he, he was a 4k, I'm sure of it. Let me test. One second. Because I have them all here with me. I've been testing the deck like crazy. Yep, he's a 4k. <laughs> okay, so the thing is with the... Um, with the SL squad, it's really good to have them back because now you kind of could restand like very easy because again you keep the last attack to attack the vanguard. So let's say this boosts the skydiver, skydiver hits the vanguard, uh, skydiver goes to the soul, you pull something from your hand and he restands, which gives you another strong attack. Also, you could put the triggers on him which means he could restand for multi-attack. You could also do the double skydiver attack when you attack with a skydiver, hits a vanguard. If you, especially if you have a trigger that you put on him, then you call another Skydiver from your hand and then you attack the Fangard. If that still hits, it should hit, then that Skydiver could go to the soul again. Then you have to call something like a Bracky or a Juggernaut that hits the high numbers and then you could still hit the Fangard again. Sometimes that could be a game. So having those one or two Skydivers in your hand or keeping the Skydiver in your hand, calling the other one uh, with Dudley then uh, you could still do some crazy combos you could see me excited about this but again it's so much fun to have this clan in <clears throat> Vanguard Zero because it does give you the combo potential that a lot of clans miss like Nova has it a little bit which is nice but most of the other clans are very simple hit the right numbers and then just boom 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 and this deck does it differently so nice to have them back. Then we have another card, which is also very iconic in Spike Brothers, which is Reckless Express. Uh, this guy has the same skill as Bracken, a Juggernaut pretty much 
when he attacks, you saw plus one. He gained plus five gain and he goes to the bottom of the deck. Um, so, very easy, very good skill, very abusable, let's say, in, in uh, Spike with this. Uh, then we have uh, this guy. I never was a really big fan of him. Uh, Cyclone Blitz right here. The thing is with him, he also costs your soul uh, for his skill to activate, which is when he attacks, you saw plus one. And then he gained extra 3k. Becomes a 9k attacker, which is sometimes good because he hits the great twos on the great two turn. Problem, you cannot afford to lose more soul. And you have way better great ones in this deck, so don't really use him. But it's a, it's a card that a lot of clans get. The same as the next one, uh, we have the command of Yayu Cannon right here. Whenever the attack boost, uh, the attack hits that he boosts, is uh, you can discard a card and draw. Again, it's you don't know what you're gonna draw. I think, I guess, you could just discard those cards that you don't need. Uh, this could be good in like some other decks, but for spikes, I don't know. I would rather have my key units in my deck. Uh, and the same as for Blitz, you would rather have the Soul Blast for your other uh, cards. I, I would have been very happy to see Medical Manager, just with a simple skill when it's called your Soul Charge 1. It was always a good card and we played it in the old days because we need the Soul. And of course, last but not least, we see Gyro Slinger with, with his original ability. Uh, you come to last one, he gains an extra, tank, uh, extra 1k, which is good because sometimes you could make right numbers with him. Uh, you activate like the skill twice and you make him a, a 9k boosting 11k that could be uh, could be very good all right now we go to uh, the uh, great ones because we have one left which is Dudley Dan um Dudley Dan is a very important card in Spike with this this is something that we didn't get in the uh, V series but I still hope that we will get it and pretty much what Dudley Dan does is as what he normally would do in the old days, which is uh, when it boosts a fan guard, you count last two, and you put a card from your hand to the soul, and then you activate the ability by calling one card from your deck to an open mega circle. And this card gives, again, the deck a very different dimension, because this calls, and that means you could call shield, you could call great twos to have more defense on your field while having an extra attacker. Uh, you could also call something like skydiver who extends your combos. You could do a lot of crazy stuff with him. You pretty much give up cards from your hands to have more great twos and stuff on the field to defend with. So it's a very important card to play, but it also make the deck different. If you play him, or you don't play him, that changes the whole idea of the deck. So that's why I still think that Dudley Dan is the card that should have been introduced in V, but that would make Spike Brothers a very strong clan. With having just one extra attacker means that you could call a Gyro Slinger or call a Spike Bouncer that could recall something else on the other column. Bull Spike could still move the markers. So that's the reason we didn't get him. But I think that we will get him in Vanguard uh, B, and that's when uh, Rising No will get uh, will get introduced because Rising No will have the lead end skill, but a little bit different. Okay, let's go back to zero. So you have these two, which are the multi-attacking option. Of course, you have C3, you have the lead end. You have to be very smart about sometimes sacrificing C3 skill for the lead end. If you don't have the counter less, and Z3 could be in handy. It really depends on how your format. I mean formation on the field look like but pretty much those two cards actually give you the edge in Spike Brothers and I still think that Dudley Dan should have been uh, like a triple rare or something. Alright now we have some uh, decks that I would like to show you. So the first one that I would like to show you is the perfect numbers. Uh, this is more let's say of a less combo deck. This is the deck that I started with testing before I introduced Dudley Dan to the clan. And this deck runs four copies of uh, the General C3. There is no reason to not run him. He is your main grade 3. He always have been in the old days your main grade 3. And uh, then you add in, of course, the Juggernaut and the Skydiver. I wanted to run only two, uh, three Skydivers because I wanted to add in two um, United Attacker just for more testing value of the United Attacker. Uh, as you know, in Fengar Zero, you may only run 
13 grade threes, 13 grade twos, and 13 grade one. The triggers on this could be whatever you want. Uh, what I like to put in this deck is the Seafreeds are draws, the Skydivers are draws, the Juggernauts are the heals, which is what most people are going with because you could kind of recycle them and heal multiple times if your opponent, especially Miracle Heal, like you could Miracle Heal like crazy sometimes because you are putting those Juggernauts back to your deck all of the time. So that's pretty good. And um, the Unite attack right here are the crits. You could also make them draws, but I do also like having those crits. And also most people think that you run only one unit attacker, which means that the second crit could surprise them. But again, it doesn't really matter in Vanguard Zero because the PG would still work. But again, this was the deck that I tested with. So this is the first deck. Then I will show you the second deck, which is the better deck. For the Great Twos, uh, we pretty much have to run the 10k because we don't really have a lot of other options. But it's good, it's good to ride and it's good to have as Rhaegar. Sometimes our opponent have a little bit trouble getting rid of him. But most of the time, especially just riding these guys uh, is always good. I've always been good. Then we have the uh, Baraki as a 4 off, very important key piece, the same as Juggernauts. We have 3 copies of the Devil Summoner, I'm a big fan so I have to play him. And then we add in two spike bouncers. A spike bouncer right here again helps you to hit the right numbers, which is this deck name. This deck's name is perfect number. So this deck is made to have the right numbers. So the spike bouncer with the Wonder Boy could hit the right numbers. Um, and sometimes also with the gyro sling, depending on your opponent's name on the tanky or I think. We have uh, Merlin as a four off. Of course, the PG is needed. Wonder Boy, as I said. And then we have the Gyro Slinger in here because this deck does not really counter blast at all. So you have your Gyro Slinger to use those counter blasts or your United Attacker. So it's really this deck could use United Attacker, and that's why I wanted to test it multiple times because sometimes you want to use him, sometimes you don't, sometimes he comes in handy. That's why he's a two off because you want to see him. Okay, then we add the two copies of Reckless Express. So this was the deck that I tested for your starter. It's Mega Trainer. I didn't put it right here because I thought, well, uh, you guys would know. So um, I don't really want to use the Grade Three Searcher, especially not in Spark Brothers. Well, it's kind of also good, but having like a Mega Trainer in your deck is always good because he could search you, depending on the deck. In this deck, he will definitely most of the time search the PG, but you could also search the Wonder Boy because the Wonder Boy with the um if you don't have him in your hand but with the jar with the general c3 he makes the perfect 21 numbers because general get the extra 3 game when he's boosted by sprite Bird. so again um definitely go for mega trainer but this is the simple deck this is the deck that only makes the right numbers like boosting the right cards having the right columns is very 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 good in this deck and could play very easy sometimes you surprise your opponent by calling something with the uh, general C3 to the field, but again, it's kind of based more on luck. And then we have the more combo heavy deck. Um, this is a deck that I didn't come up with right away. I had to do a little bit of testing, and some of my friends on Facebook helped me as well. Uh, one of the guys who helped me on Facebook as well is, if I'm pronouncing the name right, I'm sorry if I'm not, um, Morilo. He uh, sent me a picture of his deck, which I will show you later because he tested the deck in the Japanese format as well and he enjoyed the deck a lot so that's why I felt give him the shout outs. Uh, then I tested his deck list and it's really good but also as I came to realize that Spike Wars again do not have that much of a choice to play you have kind of two decks you have a combo heavy deck and you have a perfect column deck and the combo heavy deck sometimes rely on the right combo pieces but also could adapt to different situations, so it's way more fun to play than the other deck that I showed you. But this deck definitely also play the four copies of Juggernaut and the four copies of General Seafried, because they are the main grade threes. Juggernaut being the heal who recycles himself, and General Seafried being the only Vanguard that you really want to ride. The one downside to Seafried is it's a 10k, but again, that's, that's alright. And then we have the four copies of Skydiver and the one copy of United Attacker. United Attacker is in here because we don't have any other great work to play. United Attacker is a good first right target because he gives you Soul Charge 2. Why 2? Because he himself will be Soul whenever you're right. 
uh, Siegfried on the top of him, and then he also soul charges in the main phase. So again, he's a good right target, but as a first right target, and that's it. After that, you pretty much will use most of your counter lasses to do stuff, so he will not be that effective, and you would definitely not have the soul to use him. But we have to add the 13th grade 3 in the deck, so that's why he's in there. Then we have the grade 2s. Again, the 10Ks, the Brachys are stable in the deck, the same as Juggernauts and Seafreeds. And we add a combination of the uh, grade 2s. We don't want to run Zacharys, again, because he's not that good in this game. And we have to run the Devil Summoner because he's very good, especially with Dudley Dan, which I will show you later, which is the combo that you could have more shield on the field, but he also could call another grade 2 which be very good. If not, then it's sure, you still have your shield on the field. Being a 7k doesn't really matter, your opponent would definitely have to attack into him first. Um, if they play something else like Kaido. <laughs> um, so a combination of these, you could play 5. It's up to you. Um, you could kind of play 4 Summoner, 1 Spike Bouncer, or whatever you want. I play 3 on 2 because I like Spike Bouncer still because you kind of sometimes make the correct numbers and uh, it's really fine to use, especially in the early game. I find him very good. But again, Devil Summoner is also good if he gets you the right card, but he doesn't always do. So it's up to you to play a combination of these two. Which one you like more, you play more. If you want to add Zacharias, it's also up to you, but I'm not a fan. Uh, four PGs, very understandable. Then we don't run Wonder Boy, but we run a combination of three Dan and three Assault Squad. You want one Dan behind your Fingard and one Assault Squad behind the other Rayguard, and that's it. If you have these two, then you're set to go, then you're good. On the other column, you kind of want this guy. You want him to be on the other column, especially if the other column boosts something like a Bracky, because they make the right 16 column, which could go up to 21, which hits the opponent's Fingard even if you hit him twice or he gets a trigger. So we run a 3-3-3. Remember that we still run Mega Trainer as your starter, so you could search the right grade one to your hand. If your opponent runs a deck that could retire your field, then also that's strange because you kind of need those rare guards. But again, it's not when this guy when this clan will come out. Uh, we'll have to see how the format would look like and if they are a very heavy retired deck. I think not. I think Kaigiro will, will step back and some other clans will be better, but we'll have to wait and see uh, how the English format would be like because, again, people in Europe, America and other countries slash continents that play this game uh, have sometimes different choices than the people in Japan that play it. Okay, so a combination of 3-3-3 three, 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 is uh, very good it does work for me again with my testing um why because again your formation would look ex exactly like how it's placed on the screen the middle column is boosted by the dudley Dan. one of the columns is boosted by the assault squad and the other columns boosted by the 7k it's as easy as that that's what you want to do and if you put math into it this should be the case to run 333 to have let's say, um, more chance to get them to your hand. And again, you still have your Mega Trainer. The Reckless Express being a 7k is only needed if he's boosting the Bracky. If he's not boosting the Bracky, which is the 9k, if he's boosting something like, uh, let's say, the Spike Bouncer, then the Assault Squad will also do, because the Spike Bouncer will go up to 11, and the Assault Squad would be a 6k, which is perfect to boost him. The same goes for your Panther, or, uh, yeah, Panther. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, but again, only for the Bracky, it's interesting to have that extra 1k being the 7k, not the 6k. The Dudley Dan, you kind of want to play only one to have behind your finger, but you cannot afford to always search him out with your... Uh, mega training, you'd rather search your PG, especially in this deck because you do need the shield value. This is the deck that's, um, that was sent to me, and this is uh, the you can see it like um, it plays 
the Juggernaut being the heal, he plays 9 draws, again also for this deck you could play the 1 crit but I would advise you to play 9 draws because it works better, especially in this spike deck. Um, as you can see there are some differences, he runs 2 Assault Squad and 4 of the Reckless Express. Um, I didn't find me myself having enough soul to do that, I do understand this because it does mean that you could have two attackers in if you uh, go second and you ride, but still I don't want to lose my boosters. This deck could be very effective later on, you don't want it to rush too much and lose too much counter blasts. You want to get rushed and then rush them back, that's, that's how this deck works, and then when you get into your grade 3 turn you go boom, drop, <laughs> do a lot of damage. Uh, for the grade twos, the difference is right there is him having one less spike bouncer. Me having an extra spike bouncer is because I run the SL squad at three, which means that I would rather have the SL squad boosting the spike bouncer and not boosting the uh, Bracky right here because that 1k makes the difference. Um, and that's kind of it for the rest of the deck. Most of the deck is exactly the same. The double summoner he runs at four, I run at two, uh, I mean at three. But I think this is the way to go when you go to spike uh, to build your spike with the deck. There are some simple stuff that you kind of really want. Uh, you want your Juggernaut, you want your uh, C Freed, you want to make your Juggernaut the heal. Uh, you want your Dudley Dan for the multi attack and combo. You want your Brackies boosted by your Reflex Express. And again, that's when you play against an uh, in 11k based Vanguard. When you play against a 10k based Vanguard. It's always good to just boost them by the assault squad. And that's kind of it. It's a uh, long ass video, but uh, yeah, definitely very, very, very interesting. A lot of fun for you guys. I hope that you will enjoy this kind of content as well. I'm doing a lot of Spike Brother content uh, for these days. Also, Happy Easter, if you haven't seen and noticed. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed as well. Try to still be safe. Don't do crazy stuff, I know. But, I mean, in Europe now or in the Netherlands, the weather is amazing. Let's try to still keep at home because it's good for you, it's good for your family. If you could work from home, then do that as well. Do as much as you can from home and uh, just be safe, guys. Also, thanks again for watching. I hope that you guys enjoy our content as always. And uh, don't forget to like and sub to our channel because that support that you give us makes a huge difference. Thanks again for watching, guys. Until next time.